Okay. Hello. And I'm doing this whole thing again. The second time I'm doing this video. Hopefully I can do it correctly this time. Um, my goal is to not to go over 20 minutes. Um, and I'm really, really trying to do that because the last video I did, which I will be posting up, uh, it's just been taking forever to edit, is 10 things you need to know about the Europass. This is only part one and I'm taking forever. And I did a, an hour worth of footage. I'm going insane. <laughs> I'm like, how could I talk for an hour and not know it? You know, so uh, I'm trying to get that done, and I'm also trying to uh, get the second part out because I haven't even done the second. I haven't taped the second part of the ten things you need to know about the Euro Pass um, tips, tri tip, uh, tips, tricks, and all the above. And um, I need to get started on that. But for now, I'm going to do a quick video, and it's going to be a story time. Okay, story time. And it's just going to tell you about a story I had when I first got to France and the first day that I was. Um, and that trip. I will talk about tons of stories. I have a boatload of stories to talk about my travel times and um, I would love to share them with you. I do do a lot of traveling. I've traveled by car, bus, boat, airplane, train, and if I could do it by anything else I would do it too. Um, but I today I'm going to talk about my bus in Europe because I've done buses in the United States and I did it in Europe this past summer which was really interesting. It's a little different from the way I'm used to American bus system which is a Greyhound if you're not from America. So this is the trip. This is the overall trip for this particular thing so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about when I go into the story. I was flying from, you know, from South Florida to Paris, France, and then I had to get to Paris, France to Venice where I stayed for two months, approximately. Um, so, but I wanted to go to Paris because I wanted to see it. When I booked the flight, um, I booked it like way in advance and things kind of changed. So, uh, the idea of me just, oh, taking a train and traveling down to uh, um, Venice, Italy became less and less uh, available or like like actually something I could do without it hampering my trip or whatever so what I did was I had to find a way to get there at a low cost because I'm very if you know me I'm very like frugal very cheap <laughs> it's also bad. Um, not cheap in a sense where like oh I'm just gonna cheap stuff or whatever no I don't know like I want the quality versus quantity but when it comes to traveling I like to get the most bang for my buck is my philosophy in while traveling it doesn't even matter like if it's gonna be you know where I'm going it doesn't matter where I'm going I always like to get the most money for what I'm getting and I don't I obviously do not I'm not those travelers that would go somewhere and just stay in my hotel room I love the adventure of being out there and like exploring the city and all that jazz and all that jazz. Anyways, um, so that's the whole trip. I was going to be in Venice for six weeks and I was traveling for seven to eight weeks. So some of it was going to be spent in France and most of it was going to be spent in Italy, traveling all over Italy, but my stationary place would be in Venice. I was planning on going to different cities for like the day or the weekend, but then live in Venice. A part of a study abroad program that I did with my professors. Uh, when I got to Paris, I booked a, a ticket to this bus place and I will put it here, the name of it, in case you're interested. Um, because it, 
this is one of the transportation I took while in Europe. I didn't just only do trains. So I get to Paris and then knowing that I was going to be there for one day, I did do the hop on hop off bus because I knew I only had a limited of time and I was there for actually less than a day. Um, originally I was supposed to be there for a complete day and one night, um, but no, I'm sorry, I was so late to getting the, the ticket for the train that the train would have been 200 euros to spend to get from Paris to Venice and I wasn't going to spend 200 euros just to get from one place to the next place. It just seems ridiculous. So I took the bus and I knew with the bus I would have less time in Paris but at least I would only spend like 60 euros or 70 euros to get from Paris to Venice. Um, and that's what I did. I got to Paris, I did the hop on, hop off. I got to see, you know, the museum. I got to see the Eiffel Tower, um, took lots of pictures. I got to see everywhere, all the important places. And I also got to listen to like a person on the speaker telling me about the places and different things like that. Um, and then after that, after I enjoyed my time, took lots of pictures and I was, I was ready to go because I knew it was time for me to head over to the bus area. I was asking around different people like um, that seemed to be willing to help um, and it was actually the people I asked with the people that were in charge of the hop on hop off company that I was with and I asked them and they're like um so I ended up just taking a taxi and the taxi driver still didn't know and so he took me to the place where I was but the place didn't look like it was supposed to be where I was particularly in. I did see the sign for it when we were going off the highway but it didn't seem like the place to go so I um, there was a hotel, so I asked them, do you know where this is? And they were like, um, well, I think it's over by that area where the train station. I'm like, oh, but it's not a train. They're like, no, no, I think it's in the train station. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just go inside the train station because if anything, I could just ask someone over there for help. So I go to the train station and then I go all the way down. Like I go up and then down. Like I remember stairs and then like having to go inside and go down. It started getting quiet and very scary. Um, I started smelling pee, uh, like urine, for people that are proper, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I go inside there and uh, I see where the little sign says the bus, you know, whatever. So I follow the little signs to the bus area and they tells me that, you know, yeah, but you can't check in now. I got there a little bit too early. He was kind of grumpy and I'm like, whatever, I'm here in Paris, I don't care. And so I go and I go to the bathroom, forgetting that you have to pay for the bathroom, um, which was weird because I remembered earlier, no, at the airport it's free. So when I got there, I was like, oh crap, I gotta pay for the bathroom. So I ended up paying the guy for the bathroom, and that was probably the last time, no, no, I paid one more time, but that was only because I was desperate, and I was like on the way back to Paris after the trip, but after that, I was like, I'm never paying for a bathroom. Um, my feeling on that, because I paid the guy, and the bathroom, I couldn't even, ugh, it was so disgusting, like it smelled horrible. It was disgusting. It was like, why would anyone agree to be in this bathroom and let alone pay for this bathroom? <sighs> That's all I had to say. <sighs> what a traumatic event. No, joking. <laughs> so anyways, I get to... I pay the guy, I didn't even use the bathroom, I was like screw it because I was thinking oh maybe I can stay in the bathroom for a little bit longer than usual, get myself ready and set for this long, really long bus ride. By the way, the bus ride would be longer than my plane ride from South Florida to Paris. It took a day, it was 27 hours that predicted, I think it took like 28 hours or something like that, 27 to 28 hours actually you know get from Paris to Venice by bus uh, so I was like I was trying to get myself prepared I was thinking that I could get myself prepared in the bathroom you know uh, maybe change my outfit you know it's something a little bit more comfortable you know um, stuff like that but there was no possible way I was gonna do it in that bathroom so I ended up just like standing there waiting finally the guy was 
being less of a douchebag <laughs> and he's like come on people you could you know get your tickets or because you have a ticket but you he has to give you something to so that you checked in blah blah to verify that you're on the train or whatever so we get there and i get that done and, and then i saw my bus driver there are two bus drivers and i was i'm not used to uh non-american culture uh because born and raised here in america uh, so when I got there, uh, they were smoking. <laughs> they were smoking inside the bus, not outside the bus. What the heck? That's not professional. You don't smoke in front of your customers. Like, I wasn't getting offended, but I was just so shocked that they were doing it in front of us that I was like, wow. Um, long story short, so we get on to the bus. <laughs> When we were getting the stuff into the bus, one of the French ladies that ended up sitting next to me, she was speaking to me in fluent French. She thought I was French, which made me feel so special, but she was talking too fast. I didn't understand a word she was saying. I'm just like, <laughs> like some idiot. I was like, just literally like, I was like, we, <laughs> we, oui, oui. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Cause I knew she was talking about the conditions that they were putting us through and they're being so rude by like da, da da da. But she was talking so fast I didn't understand everything that she was saying to me, and I was like, <laughs> and I was also really shy, so I couldn't say anything back. I would just be like, wait, I'm not used to someone in French uh, speaking to me like fluently. French I learned in class, not the French you will encounter in France. I have learned that too, which makes sense because, I mean, we speak English, but we're not speaking proper English more than half the time. We're saying words that aren't even like in the English dictionary. And we come up with different ways of saying things because we're so used to our language. So when someone comes here and they're trying to understand what we're saying, and if we talk too fast, it's the same difference. So I was definitely blown by her uh, fastness to speak. I'm not used to that. I'm used to being in class where everyone's speaking really, really, really slow. Um, so, um, so that was the first experience. Me, I was just like, I just want to sleep this 24 hours. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that's what I did. I stopped in Milan, Milano, um, Milano, Italy. And it was like kind of like a big stop. Uh, we got to the next stop, which I think was Verona. No, it wasn't the next stop. We kept going on stops and stuff like that, and less and less people get got off. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the bus driver, I think, tried to convince people to get off sooner rather than later because he didn't want to have to go to Venice. Um, but me, the tourist, I was like, I kind of have to get here, <laughs> you know, because I can't just take a regular bus. I don't know this area. And it was like literally my second day in Europe. And I was like, this is my first time being here, <laughs> so help me out here. So and he's like, okay, I'll take you to Venice. And he kind of felt obligated. He started speaking to me in English. He was trying to get to know me, but he didn't know much of English to speak to me. Um, at the point, they were speaking Italian, not French. Um, so that was also another thing. Like I couldn't even tell him to speak French because he spoke Italian. Um, <clears throat> So then he took me to Venice and got to Venice, and then the minute I got to Venice, I'm like, this is not Venice. Because <laughs> there were like buses and cars, and like, wait a minute, Venice doesn't have cars or buses. Um, but I learned very quickly that that's not the case. There's a lot of stereotypes about Venice that tourists and people do not realize that I want to share with you guys. And that's the end of this story, but I'm going to go further and tell you more exciting stories about being in Venice. and. Uh, different other crazy, crazy, I mean crazy stuff that happened to me or in people that I was with. Um, I hope you enjoyed the story. The moral of the story is don't ever take a bus in Europe. Um, the experience was very long. Unless you're planning on going from one city to the next, which could be ridiculously cheap because I paid 60 to 70 euros to get from Paris to Venice. Imagine if I was going to like the next city. Take a bus, you know? <laughs> it would be a lot cheaper than, you know, taking the, the train if you're not doing Europass. So, um, thank you for watching. I will upload this video before I get the tips out and it will be 10 things you need to know. 10 things. <laughs>
and it's broken up in two parts. I did the first part, I still have to film the second part, but it's been taking me forever because I do go to school and I do work, um, but uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want that creative outlet. <clears throat> I just love the idea of putting out videos and giving tips and tricks and stuff like that, and I just have to have that creative outlet other than architecture and urban planning, and that's what I do. So, um, again, thank you for watching. I hope you had a good time. Um, let me know if you want to hear any other videos, or uh, I'm probably going to be the only one watching myself <laughs> doing this video. <laughs> but if you have questions or comments, leave them down below. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I will be getting out videos as soon as I can. And once I graduate, I will be putting out more videos more frequently. Um, just for now, I'm just kind of doing this. Uh, thank you again for watching. Another day, another gift. 